Dr. Krishnendu Mukhopadhyay is the Professor, Department of Environmental Health Engineering at Sri Ramachandra University, Chennai. Sir is also a member of the International Society on uh, Exposure Science. And Sir is also involved in the ICMR project, estimating the exposure to volatile organic compounds and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons associated with the use of kerosene uh, in the household, both in rural and urban Tamil Nadu. <laughs> So today is uh, a discussion. It's a kind of discussion because uh, some of the answers and response will come from the uh, opposite side. We'll be talking about the chemical monitoring in healthcare. Basically, our perception is <coughs> that only the patients are going to the hospital or some healthcare systems, and all sorts of hazards will be washed out there, and the patient will come back to home with the clean, uh, with their clean uh, postures, clean. Uh, environment. Basically, we have to see the monitoring system is everywhere. We are monitoring the universe, we are monitoring our globe, we are monitoring our state, our country, our district, our uh, occupational zone, our family, everywhere. But now it is the time to find out the micro scale monitoring system. We need to have some monitoring system in such a way that we should know how many hazards are around us. All of us are actually exposed to hundreds to thousands of different chemicals around us, probably some sorts of physical hazards, chemical, biological hazards, all these things are there. So today, if you just go through the Indian chemical industry ranks, it is third largest in Asia and sixth in the world by output. It includes basic chemicals and their intermediates, petrochemicals, fertilizers, paints, pesticides, all this all together and it is crossing 70,000 commercial products. And number of international and national protocols, guidelines, all these things are there at work to combat environmental and occupational chemical hazards. But we have to see that where we are in the healthcare system, what are the types of hazards which prevail in healthcare system? The first one, we have to see that it's a very simple thing which is cleaning agents. So many chemicals are there. In fact, some of the chemicals are carcinogenic, Disinfecting and sterilizing agents, laboratory chemicals, medical gases, anesthesia, then cytotoxic drugs and pharmaceutical substances. And basically when we are there in the health setup, we have to think about the four distinct kind of exposure routes. And the first one, obviously, all sorts of uh, exposure monitoring and its uh, compliance that have been taken worldwide is based on the inhalation exposure. Other things are not much focused right now. So the, as per the inhalation, we are just taking the monitoring in the workplace, just going uh, through the area and uh, taking some instrument, taking some uh, measurement, analyzing it, and reporting it back to the uh, area. These are so many things that there, we, it is very difficult to rate within this uh, certain uh, point of time, but from baby bottles to the pesticide residues, all are prevalent in the healthcare system. When the hazard exposure and pathways are concerned, the source determination, particularly this is based on the uh, definition of industrial hygiene, where four distinct pillars are very important. That is the ARAC principle, anticipation, recognition, evaluation, and control. All sorts of things to be recognized, and that is also a part of the crucial monitoring. Monitoring at workplace can be divided into two parts. When we are taking some instruments to the industry, to any sorts of industry, we are taking care of through two distinct parts. One is the active monitoring system, another is the passive one. When the active monitoring systems, we have to follow certain national or international protocol. The right side there, uh, you can see that one example is here. Like this one, this is the part which you can easily download from NIOSH uh, a data sheet, where this is also one kind of miniature of Bible of that particular chemical, how to monitor it and when to monitor. All these things are there. And in the left side, if you just go through the other one, this is the passive uh, monitoring system, where the real monitoring system, where you can see. Now the problem is, which one is the gold standard? So many monitors are there in the market, but it is needed to know which one is standardized. So now the standardization is very important according to the need you have. Our compliance, as I told, that most of the things are uh, having compliance with inhalation exposure, but other routes are also there. The absorption routes are there, the injection routes are there, and all sorts of things to be monitored, which are very, very important in all sorts of phases of the, uh, uh, of the chemicals. 
Now, when we go to the monitor, this particular sequence is very important. The first, we should work through, like being an industrial hygienist, we'll go to the spot, we'll just check around, we'll just go around the place, we'll just find out what are the hot spots there, and accordingly, that location, outdoor, indoor, and ambient air measurements is also important. Chemical inventory is important. A chain of custody, like some chemicals are coming to your area, all sorts of documentations from the receiver end to the disposal. Everything should be documented properly. Then MSDS, which is, you know that, it's a very, very important area. Uh, this is basically the Bible of the chemical. Material safety data sheet. And this material safety data sheet, it is actually your right to have this one when you are working with certain chemicals at workplaces. Medical records, yes, it is obvious that you need to maintain the medical records just to know who are the exposed chemical uh, uh, candidates. And if it is the exposure, certain exposure, that needs to be biologically monitored to have the specificity of the pathway. The other one is the employee's details. That will be in the questionnaire itself. And that should be the number uh, uh, one standard questionnaire. And uh, you should follow all these things all together to find out the correlation, the statistical correlation between the questionnaire and your exposed uh, data sheet. Then uh, training of the hygienist. It is important if I'm going there somewhere, without, without my proper training, I should not go to monitor anything. And this is happening in most of the cases without proper training, without proper qualification and expertise. People are just taking mechanically some instruments without proper calibration and others and doing the job. That is wrong. Monitoring and analytical protocols, standardization, instrumentations, all these things are there, like just to maintain the QA and QC, the quality assurance and quality control. So now this one, the next segment is another important segment. Who and where and how and whom and how should the sample be obtained? So basically, this mechanism will actually give you the correct outcomes. And this correct outcomes depended upon different types of instrumentations. As here, just I have taken a few examples, like some kind of SKC samplers, where the actively you can monitor, you can grab the samples in the air, and some samplers are taken passively by means of passive batches with different mechanisms. One is just uh, putting these things with the filter paper, like this kind of filter paper. All these are standardized. And for different types of particulate matters, it is actually working for. For the particulate group, in, and in even in uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, you can also use these things with the coated chemicals like resins. And this is one of the very, very primitive, but still it is working for VOC measurement, volatile organic compounds. It is nothing but just plain charcoal. Next, <coughs> this is biological monitoring. It is also important. So many chemicals are there in, in, in the hospital setup, particularly the hospital setups are known to have the biological monitoring system. And uh, we, uh, me, actually, I'm the uh, national coordinator of mercury and health for, from the WHO side. And we have just uh, submitted the report to the Geneva uh, high, high, uh, that is the, uh, the main uh, headquarters. And uh, we have seen some of these areas where the mercury is not even crossed the bar, but it is almost close to the permissible limits of the mercury in, in the atmosphere. And what and where to do the samples? It is basically the distribution part we have to see. And based on the distribution mechanisms, we need to find out the performance for monitoring. Then uh, you need a thorough knowledge of the, the ADME system. And based on this knowledge only, your monitoring strategy should be stratified. And this is one of the very important area where the blood plasma is needed, where the urine is needed. So like for the mercury system, you need to know where it is actually absorbed, in which state, in which oxidation state it is. All these things are having a very important role. Here, some of these things, some of the chemicals, it is in the body, how long it is exists. That biological monitoring is also having some kind of biological half-life. So biological half-life and the chemical half-lives, both are very, very important. It's just like the radio, radioactive materials, we need to know what are the half-lives. Like that biologically also, we, uh, based on the ADME principles, we need to know which chemical can be persisted and when to monitor to have the maximum proficiency there. Then a significant uh, uh, study, I have taken just one case study because of the time constraint. This is one of the study that the physicians for social responsibility, they conducted in US, and only for 20 samples, they had to go for 10 different zones, different uh, uh, area, different states. And they found out these sorts of classification out of 62 chemicals, they classified into six as bisphenol A, 
mercury, then PFCs, then phthalates, then PVDEs, and triclosan. Samples were collected in between February and April 2009, just 10 years back, even though they were very much concentrating upon these sorts of biological monitoring from 1974. But these are some of these very important uh, documents I've taken here. As a result, they got 18 chemicals were detected in every single participant. This is, this is the data from the doctors and the nurses who are working in the health side. Then all 20 participants had at least five of the six kinds of chemicals and 13 participants had all six chemicals, like class, different six classes of chemicals they have. Then all participants had bisphenol A and some had phthalates, PVDA and PFCs, all. 13 participants had dimethyl phthalates metabolite with nine above above CDC is 95% per, uh, percentile. So this is alarming, actually, the result from the workers, those who are working in the health care units. These are some of the instrumentations which are very much important. Some of the instruments are gold standard now. People are still using gas chromatography as a single unit, but if it is gas chromatography mass spectrometry or HPLC with the mass system, actually you can go to the very good resolution and the perfect result. Uh, still, some of the laboratories are using the tritometric methods where the volumetry, gravimetry, and colorimetric are still there, and the spectroscopic measurements are generally carried out for the heavy metals measurement or monitoring in the healthcare system, and everywhere it is. Now, uh, the indices, BEI, that is biological exposure indices, unfortunately, even though millions and millions of chemicals are there, uh, but only the relevant point of exposure profile as per our toxicity and exposure uh, indices, we have only 800 to 1,000 chemicals in hand. That means only for these chemicals we know the toxicity profile, exposure, and its permissible limit. And though it is uh, written in uh, the guidelines, it is not mandatory from the government compliance from US. They, it is just like a guideline, and uh, like ACGIH, they are uh, reporting this uh, according to the updated uh, publications they have every year and they, they are uh, just uh, printing this one every, like this, 2018 like this, it, it will be like this to see. Then, this is the, uh, this, for this actually I am uh, very much uh, worried. Uh, this, is, this is my last slide, but to talk a lot about these things, the plastics. Now you know that from the government side, this is banned in so many states. In so many areas, a class of plastic materials have been banned. Now, the monitoring, now we can say from here itself. So if you just make the top down, start the monitoring at your workplace. If your workplace is also accompanied with the incineration system, check the temperature. If the monitoring system is your system, is still there, check the calibration system. If the monitoring is there, just check the certificate of the person who is conducting the monitoring. If you are well aware of the situation of your workplaces. Just go through the standard documents now and update it. Check it where the exposure assessment criteria and the permissible limits are made together. And make anything, if you have the report of your own, just go for the statistical consideration. It should be statistically validated data set. The people, those who are monitoring, every day they are monitoring in different types of uh, industry, but the only concern is for the person, as a scientist, as a basic scientist, we need to know that all data should be validated statistically. So the statistical consideration, when we are talking some person, so the personal exposure is the most important data. Personal exposure, if it is not possible, in so many aspects we have seen the people are not interested to take any monitor within themselves. Then what to do? You have to take the monitor in the area, you have to take the monitor and take the monitoring in different areas according to the job profile of the person. Then you just check the job profile, then check exposure reconstruction data. Exposure reconstruction data is nothing, but it is the data where actually you are keeping your monitor in different places of the workplaces. So in this case, you just accumulate this data and collect this data, cumulative data sheet, you just keep it one in one and take, make the statistical average, statistical mean, and check the what is the average uh, exposure during eight hour work sheet. And this particular work sheet you just uh, compare with the personal data. If these two things are not matching, in 99% cases it will not match. And this mismatched data is important in science, where the rest of the things escaped. 
So this escape mechanism can be reviewed further by only by means of your personal monitoring. So personal monitoring is the best possible mechanism through which we can go for the monitoring system effectively. And still a lot of people, they are working with us very cheap business with, uh, with the monitoring system. Please uh, use those instruments if some sorts of referral points you have. If with that, those instruments are used in different sort of data set and you have the publications with those things, you can go for it. Otherwise, I, I think don't trust those data set. Otherwise, uh, another kind of instru instrumentation is important where the people are talking much uh, on, 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 the, on the QAQ issue. So QAQ issue, where it is? QAQ issue should start from the source to the sink, where the important thing is the chain of custody. Again, you have to see the chain of custody, the people, those who are actually manufacturing the, day, manufacturing the chemical, how much it is there like in, in Belor, in this particular area, in this indoor environment, how much uh, environmental toxicants are there, we don't know until and unless we have the uh, actual data sheet in hand. And, and that should be periodically monitored. So this periodic monitoring system has to be sustained. Just like your sustainable healthcare system, what you are talking about, this monitoring system has to be sustainable. And here, the role of the government and private agencies, both are quite important. And with this urges, I want everybody just use uh, other kind of materials apart from these plastics, which are also giving you a lot of carcinogenic chemicals. That's why I have kept it for some time, almost five, five minutes, you just saw these things. And with this template, you just spread out across your area. Just let people know what are the elements or chemical compositions which are actually harming us day by day, minutes to minutes. Thank you very much.